Hello everybody! In this video, we're going to be walking through the concepts of the iterators, which is one of our three major elements inside of DAX. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm here in iterators.xlsx and I'm in the concepts tab. Now, um, I, I want to add, I'm going to kind of rush through this because in my experience, uh, this page will make a whole lot more sense after the rest of the class rather than before. I think these the, these things are, are, are pretty good, but they tend to be more useful in reflection than introduction. But I feel like I should at least give you a brief uh, conceptual overview of what iterators are. If this doesn't make total and complete sense, don't worry about it. We're going to spend a lot of time doing examples, and I think those examples are frankly going to paint a better picture than any concepts page could. But uh, here we are, so let's just go ahead and sort of muddle our way through it. So uh, what is an iterator? Well, an iterator is a thing, it's a function, that creates a new value from a temp table. Now that new value can either be a uh, scalar, which is to say a number, a date, or a text, text string, or it could be a whole temp table, right? Those are the two kinds of values that it can produce. Now, uh, the common iterators, the common iterators all have the same form. And I should say, uh, here's all the common iterators listed right here. We've got sum x, max x, min x, average x, and filter. Those are our five common iterators. There are more, but these are the most common ones. And they all take the same form. Argument one is going to be a temp table that we want to add a, an expression column to. So uh, some bit of code that produces a temp table, usually a derivation, right? But anything that produces a temp table will do. So we're gonna produce a temp table here with argument one. And then argument two is going to be the definition of what I call an expression column. An expression column is a special temporary column that gets added to the temp table just long enough to be used to create a new value, either to be aggregated by uh, sum x, max x, min x, or average, or to just keep the true rows, which is what the filter function does, right? So argument one is always uh, the temp table we're gonna add a column to. Argument two is the definition of the expression column that we're gonna add to it, special temporary column that's gonna let us produce a new value. And the function name is what we're gonna do with the expression column. Sum x will sum it up, max x will find the biggest value, min x will find the smallest value, average x will average it, and filter will just keep the true rows to produce a new temp table. So imagine, imagine we've got a data model that looks like this. So we've got the mini table, that's the physical table in the data model. Right? This is data we actually loaded in that we're going to summarize. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows, seven transactions, right? In our filter context though, we have a filter for shift equals dinner, right? So uh, keeping that in mind, uh, when we go to uh, get tables, get temp tables, when we derive them, we're just gonna see the dinner rows. We won't see the first four lunch rows because that's what the filter context is gonna do for us, right? That's why we have a filter context. So we could point at subsets of the data. So if we just want to look at lunch sales, we could add a filter for shift equals, I'm sorry, if we just want to look at dinner sales, we could add a filter for shift equals dinner, and then we can just look at those dinner sales. Okay, so here's three examples, one, two, three, of uh, iterators. We've got sum x, max x, and filter. And they all, right, get a temp table, which is argument one, there, there, and there. And in all three cases, because we use the same table derivation, we produce this temp table right here over and over and over again. This is gonna be all the visible rows of the mini table given the current filter context. Since we have a filter for shift equals dinner, we just get the one, two, three dinner rows corresponding to that row, that row, and that row. If we wanted to look at lunch rows, we would have to change what's in the filter context. So we get a temp table. It's the same temp table each time, right? Because we write the same code each time, mini, mini, and mini. And then uh, we add an expression column to each one of these tables. So here in the first example, we add this expression column. For every row, get that row's units and multiply it by the price per unit. So here, uh, for that cell, we get the units times price per. So two times $9 equals $18. That's what we get for that row. One times 11 is $11. That's what we get for that row. And two times seven is 14. That's what we get for that row. So this is our expression column. It doesn't really have a name, right? The column's not gonna be around long enough to really bother naming it, but I refer to it as the expression column because it's based on that expression right there, okay? So uh, we add the column to it, and then since this is the sum x function, it sums these numbers up to get 43. That's what the sum x function does. What about the max x function? Well, again, we derive the sem temp table, so we got that temp table right there, that's argument one. 
And then max x is going to add this column to it, where for every single row, it takes the price per unit and subtracts the cost per unit, right? And so we get 9 minus 8 equals 1, 11 minus 9 equals 2, 7 minus 5 equals 2, right? This, by the way, happens to be the margin, right? So we calculate this for every single row. And then when we're done, we max it or find the biggest value. And the biggest value in this set of numbers is 2, okay? Lastly, there's the uh, filter function. And even though it doesn't end in an x, it is indeed an iterator. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, right? So we're going to drive the same temp, same temp table with this derivation right there, get all the visible rows of many, which is all these dinner rows, right? We're going to add a column to it, where for every single row, we're going to take that row's type and see if it's equal to dine-in. Well, for that row, the type is to go, so we get a false. For this second row, the type equals dine-in, so dine-in equals dine-in, so we get a true. And for the third row, dine-in also equals dine-in, so we get a true. So we get a false, a true, and a true. Now, what does the filter function do? Unlike sum, which sums up that column, or max, which finds the biggest value, filter just keeps the true rows and produces a new temp table based off of it. So if we just keep this row and this row and we dump this row right here, this is going to produce a new temp table with just those bottom two rows. Okay. Now, if you're still feeling a little bit fuzzy about this, that's okay. I only want you to get this at a very high level at this point. Uh, we're going to understand more about this as we sort of move through the next practice videos. I do, however, before we move on, I do want to say uh, a few things about the expression column, right? So I use this term expression column. The expression column is like a temporary column that's going to stick around just long enough to create the value. It's not going to be around long enough for us to bother naming it. I call it expression or exp, but it doesn't really have a name because it's not going to be around long enough. Uh, I capitalize the x because the functions are sum x, min x, average x, max x. This is the x of which you're taking the min or the max or the average or the sum. That's why I go ahead and capitalize it, just to help you see that, okay? Now, to be completely transparent, uh, this idea of an expression column is a, a simplification of a more complex idea. I I'm taking something that could be rather difficult and I'm simplifying it a great deal, right? Now, the more complex version, uh, you need to understand that uh, when you need to understand things about performance optimization and also being able to leverage uh, the different ways that DAX compresses data. The reality is, though, when you're learning DAX, you don't need to know about all that stuff. The simpler version is going to work just fine. And this simple version, it's got several advantages. It's very easy to understand. You have no doubt in your life added a, a column to a table. We all have, right? It's easy to remember. You've done it so many times. When I say, you know, add this column to that table, you kind of know what to do. And also, in this part, I, I can't emphasize this enough, it's totally reliable. So when I tell you that I'm teaching you a simplified version, um, the, the downsides of that simplification have to do almost entirely with performance, and you're unlikely to run into them uh, on any sort of regular basis. So there aren't a lot of quarter cases where this is going to break. In fact, I don't really know of any. So this is the methodology that I use day to day, and it's the one that I suggest uh, you use in this course. But if you are wondering, hey, I've, I've taken a few other classes on DAX and I've never seen this concept before, um, this is a uh, an invention of mine to help you understand it. And I think it's really going to help you uh, do that. So we'll see if that's the case over the next couple of videos. Speaking of which, let's jump over to those.